Warm Springs Native Reservation, located in central Oregon, is a sovereign nation. Consisting of approximately 1,000 square miles of diverse geography, this reservation was created by treaty in 1855 and now consists of the Wasco, Warm Springs, and Paiute tribes. These tribes gave up over 10 million acres of land in exchange for the promise of health care and education. The treaty also assured that tribal members retained hunting and fishing rights in the areas which they had vacated. In 1938, the Bonneville Dam opened, flooding one of their major fishing sites at Cascades Rapids. When the Dalles Dam was constructed in 1957, it flooded Celilo Falls. The tribes then received $4 million in compensation, marking a shift in their tribal economics. But even in their need to generate capital, they have tried to remain true to their philosophy of living in balance with the land. According to their Declaration of Sovereignty, their highest goal is to, quote, preserve our traditional cultural ways that have existed for so many centuries in harmony with our homeland, and to provide for the well-being of our people for the many centuries that lie ahead. We shall, as we always have, live in balance with the land and never use more of our precious natural resources than can be sustained forever, end quote. My family has always fished um, on the Columbia River and the Chutes River, Klickitat River, all of the tributaries of the Columbia. And you know, as a child, my grandma had always said, when we are teaching you something, learn it right the first time, mm -hmm. you know, because everything we're teaching you is going to take care of you. I went and looked at our fishing maps for our tribe, and my family had 26 different fishing sites between wow. Cascade Locks and the Dalles, or the John Day River that I could utilize. Wow. And so I started um, going to look at the fishing sites, and people were using them, but when I told them who my family was, they were real respectful and said, do you want us to stop, or can we continue fishing and we'll share the fish? And I says, oh, just you know, keep fishing and we'll share the fish. Well, that first year I started this, I had about 26,000 pounds of fish that I didn't even fish. I was just given, wow. you know, for letting people use our family sites. And so I, uh, what I did was I started getting them processed into cans, and then I started putting them away in freezers and started smoking them. And, and it's just, it's been good. It's been really good. Modern enterprises that consist of renewable resources, tourism, and recreation are established on the reservation. The primary purpose is to provide jobs and furnish the confederated tribes of Warm Springs with viable income to then invest, keeping the reservation a thriving place for its people and the land that surrounds them. Beginning in 1966, the tribes purchased and began operating the Warm Springs Forest Product Industries, allowing them to take advantage of the vast supply of natural timber resources on the reservation. The company has had its ups and downs over the years, but today is an industry leader, harvesting timber on a managed, sustained yield basis. Renewable resource income also comes from hydroelectric projects on the Deschutes River. It's perhaps ironic that they now rely on one of the leading factors contributing to the decline of the salmon stocks that have sustained them for so long. However, this irony is not lost on them. The tribes of Warm Springs have taken several steps to ensure a healthy salmon run above the project, including the purchase of several thousand acres of land around the area for wildlife protection. Small, locally owned stores and shops also provide a connection to cultural traditions and tribal heritage. Everybody in Warm Springs has some kind of a talent. I swear it, every person here has some kind of a talent. They can draw or they can beadwork 
or there are sewers. Everybody here has some kind of a talent and a store like this just draws it out of them. They come in here and, and it makes them want to go home and say, wow, Nori said if I make these things, she'll buy them from me, you know? But I think what's happening here is jobs are becoming scarce through the tribe. The budget, everybody's got to cut down on their budgets, you know, through the organization. So the jobs are becoming scarce and it's going to force more people to go out on their own to try to earn a living. Uh, my main concern is a lot of the heirlooms were leaving the reservation and being sold at pawn shops in the neighboring towns. And so I was wanting to be able to keep our items on the reservation. Just looking around, some of these are beautiful. You have beautiful clothing, beautiful artwork. Why are these being sold at pawn shops for so cheap? It's the economy. I, um, since I've opened the doors, I've had about four or five customers a day wanting to pawn items wow. and um, talking to some people that have been laid off in their jobs, uh, want to get some basic needs, diapers for the child, right. food, um, fuel to go yeah. root digging. Even in the face of modern economic pressures, there remains the need to stay connected to the land. Hunting, fishing, and gathering persist, but has become so scarce that it is often left to the elders to continue the tradition. I grew up in the, on the North End, Samnasho. It was work, but today I look at it as I'm grateful for it because by doing all of that, it helped to make me who I am. It shaped my identity. It shaped my character. It made me the woman, the grandmother, and the sister that I am today. Um, the food gathering, when we went out to gather food, we camped out for a week to two weeks, and we lived according to the season, not, not the calendar, but it was the season like now. They're gathering piaché at Webster flat and different other areas where piaché grows and the different um, traditional foods that that come into season that's where we would be gathering that food are the children today following that tradition it really depends on families willing to reconnect with that way of life and involving their children by doing it, the children learn, and by the people who have lost or have grown away from them, I don't want to say lost because it's in time, it's there. It's a matter of reconnecting with that and letting it become a part of you again. The people of Warm Springs strive to remain true to the ways of the land and a sustainable life. For many, the community is at a crossroad. Traditions of one spirit, one land, one people are crossed by influences of modern society. By relying and supporting one another and honoring the land of the seventh generation, we can all become sustainable today.